Hi, so things don't always go to plan. In fact, sometimes things go wrong and that's what happened in one of today's DIYs, but that's all right. We're gonna make it work, maybe. So let's get on to the video. What's up, my name is Jorge and in today's video, I challenge myself to upcycle existing home decor that I thrifted a bit ago for a couple of reasons. Number one, I absolutely love DIYing. Maybe it's part of my DNA or something, but there's something about getting my hands on something, transforming something, giving it a makeover. Am I alone in this or do you also like to DIY? The second reason is it's a great way to save some money to decorate your house. Of course, thrift shops are full of lots of great things, not so great things either that just need a little bit of love. But overall, you'll find unique pieces, more affordable pieces, and sometimes you need to alter the color of something. Uh, or something simple, it doesn't need to be that complicated. The third reason is I love the idea of thrift flips, taking old pieces, giving a new life, reimagining in a way that fit the current design style that one might have, because let's face it, we're always changing up our design style, our interests. And like I mentioned, when the project did not work out, but that's okay, now we know what not to do. For this first project, or projects, technically there are a couple of them, but it's the same concept, so I'm just gonna categorize it as one. But many of you have seen these vessels throughout my videos and have been asking where I bought them. Fun fact, I thrifted them, but they did not look like that. Unfortunately, I lost footage of what they looked like, but if you can just imagine this like ugly red, green, and like fuchsia color, um, glass vases, the shape was nice, but the color was way off, so of course I had to get my hands on them. They were super cheap. I'm gonna share with you this technique that maybe you haven't seen before. And then I also applied the same technique to this like cute table lamp um, with this cute little handle that literally got me this $5 and I transform it to make it look like not $5. So here's a little glimpse of what the vases used to look like. Again, sort of this like colored glass. Those colors just were not for me. So I decided to do the baking soda technique. My goal for these was to make this look like vintage pottery. And so with that baking soda technique, I think I added a little bit of nice texture that made it look more like ceramic. And in the end, it did not look that bad, but I kept going and I totally ruined it because I just added these like ugly colors as you can see here. And then once I got to the dirt technique, I kind of just rubbed it on there, but it wouldn't stick. So I wet it and then I applied more dirt. By the way, I'm using some potting soil here. And then in the end, it kind of ruined it because look, it just like peeled off the paint and it just looked really, really bad, like a DIY gone wrong. So I guess my solution to this was to just spray paint it flat black. As you can see, the vessels really benefited from the previous texture that was added. Once I spray painted them black, I think it made them feel a little bit more genuine. One thing I did differently here is I actually added some water to the soil and then gently applied that onto the vase using a chip brush, making sure that I was not peeling off the paint. I think this was a more successful solution. And then I let that fully dry and it's okay if the water drips down. I think it creates a nice sort of patina effect. But then I took just a dry brush and kind of just like wiped off any residue that was left behind. As you can see, the patina is really showing through here. Definitely more on the rustic side and I really like the way that this looks. So most recently, I found this awesome table lamp. This is actually a pretty large lamp, and guess what? I got it for $5 at, I believe, Habitat for Humanity Restore. So of course, I had to do the same technique because I'm obsessed with it. And so I did not even bother with the baking soda here. I just spray painted it flat black. I gave it about two coats and let that fully dry um, before moving on to the dirt technique. All right, so I'm out here in the garden, so sorry if it's a little noisy, but I'm here to get some soil because I want to do the dirt technique. Now, I know what you're thinking, Jorge, that is so last year's news. Yes, I know, but I'm still obsessed with it because I love the way that it makes pottery feel sort of vintage. It makes it feel primitive. It makes it feel like it was dug out from ancient Rome or something like that. Now, I do have a particular way of putting it on there. I've just tried a couple of different ways, but of course, I will show you the best way that I have seen work for me. Um, also, I have gotten some questions if there are ways to do 
something else other than dirt and yeah I think you could probably do like cinnamon you could probably do like ground coffee um, what else if you have any other ideas or ways that you have done I guess the dirt technique comment down below and let us know also can we take a minute and appreciate my parents garden they've done a great job So for this project, I'm actually going to just be using some soil from the ground as opposed to just potting soil. I don't know if that will make a big difference, but I guess we'll, we'll find out. Now of course, I'm also going to add a little water and apply it using the chip brush. Now before applying it, I'm giving it a quick coat of black paint again, just so that it has something to adhere to. At least I think that it'll do. I don't know if it actually does anything or not. Um, now I have heard some people express concern about sort of wiping dirt on their objects that they're bringing inside now i totally get it but personally i'm totally fine with it i feel like soil is a natural element from the earth and i don't mind it in my home as long as it's not on the floors of course as you can see i'm just drenching this with that mixture but that's okay i'm gonna let that fully dry and when i come back to it of course it's gonna look like a hot mess and trust me it's gonna look like a hot mess like look at this it's a hot mess that's okay because we're going to take our dry brush and we're going to just wipe off any excess i guess soil um, until we get that desired look um, if you can't get all of it off that's okay you could come back with just some spray paint and kind of just cover that up until you get that desired look i do want to mention that i came back and applied a clear protective sealer i didn't show it on camera but i think it's a great way to lock everything into place i will link it down below of course the green lampshade had to go but how neat is this pleated lampshade i actually thrifted it for a couple of dollars really great condition just a little bit dusty but that's okay i vacuumed it up as one should good as new so let's take a look at the final result You all, I'm very happy with the way these turned out. I love the texture, it's not too much. Um, I even like the like white um, sort of marks that were created, patina, maybe from the water, which I'm a little bit concerned now. But I also wanted to share this eucalyptus that I found recently. It's actually dried eucalyptus in the sort of red color. I think it's perfect for this upcoming fall winter season. There's nothing like the real thing. So I will link that down below as well as maybe some lampshades if I can find some that are similar. I know that these pleated lampshades are definitely in right now and it's a great way to update any lamp that you might have. Now milking stools have been pretty popular recently. In fact, they're all over the place. And if you saw my previous thrift flip video, I made a couple of milking stools using just regular sort of bar stools. I cut down the legs shorter and refinished the stools. And I think they turned out fantastically. But with the leftover legs, they're about maybe an inch in length. I thought I could make another milking stool and that's what I did in this project using some concrete. So for this project, I'm going to be using those legs that I chopped off from an old bar stool. I'm actually just going to use three just because I like the look of a three-legged stool. doesn't really matter though. Also using this tub that I got from Dollar Tree, believe it or not. And then I'm coating it with some cooking oil because that's what I had on hand just so that it does not stick to the mold. Now, when you're working with concrete, um, if you haven't worked with it before, it's pretty simple, but you got to kind of work fast. Here, I'm just using a cheap bag that I got from Lowe's. It's like three or four dollars. It doesn't really matter, or maybe it does, as we will find out in the end. Adding a little bit of color pigment just because I like my concrete to have sort of a warm undertone. And then I'm mixing it together with this drill. I have sort of this like mixing attachment on there. Not necessary, you can just use a stick. Then I'm pouring it onto our, I guess, mold here. And then I'm just tapping it a couple of times just to release some of those air bubbles. When it came time to the legs, I kind of just eyeballed it to be honest. I inserted them into our tub here and then I'm just using some masking tape to hold them into place. Again, we don't want any of this to move around. Um, we're going to just leave it alone, put it somewhere on the ground that is flat and not on slope and just let it for a couple of hours, honestly a couple of days. I left it overnight, which you will see here was a mistake. I should have left it even longer, um, but we will get to that point in just a second. Again, put those legs in there, hold them in, in place.
the following day, I woke up with joy, with excitement to release this from the mold. So that is what I did. I came out here, I removed the tape, and then I gently turned it over to release it from the mold. And luckily, it did not stick to the mold, which is honestly a first for me. They always stick to the mold. And look at that. It came out nicely. However, I noticed a big crack. I wiggled it a little bit, and of course, yes yes it broke oh my gosh my heart broke in half literally what a sad sad day you all that was a complete fail oh my gosh um i think a couple things went wrong here the first thing is i think i released it from the mold way too soon i should have to to cure another day but i did it and that's what happened the second reason is maybe i used the wrong concrete mix that one was like the cheapest bag I could find at Lowe's. It was like three or four dollars and it had a lot of aggregates. Maybe that could have been part of the issue. I probably could have used like um, a cement mix, the one that does not have aggregates. That could have probably been better. Third thing is I probably should have reinforced it because as you know, concrete can be very brittle. If you decide to try out this project, definitely share with me on Instagram. I would love to see your results. But again, this was a fail. Let's move on to the next project. And for this final thrift, actually it's not even a thrift, I would say it's more of a hack, but I found this cool mid-century side table and I don't remember if I shared it or not, maybe it's in a recent haul, don't remember, but it's a cool side table that I think was great. It just needed a little bit of cosmetic love. Maybe you have some furniture at home that the finish is maybe peeling off or it just needs a little bit of updating. It doesn't need sanding, it doesn't need painting or refinishing, it just needs a little bit of a refresh on the finish. So I found this cool product to do the sort of restoration. No, this is not sponsored, so you're welcome to that company. Um, but I don't think this is a cool hack to really update your furniture. So this is the beautiful mid-century side table. As you can see, it's in great condition. However, the top has a little bit of water damage and just some spots. That's okay, we're gonna fix it. The first thing I did is I removed the hardware. So basically the door pulls, removed the drawers, and then I gave everything a good clean. Luckily this wasn't greasy or anything, so just some warm water was enough. No, this is still not sponsored, but I'm using Howard's Restore or Finish. They come in a couple of different colors. I picked up the dark walnut because I think that's what this wood is. I don't know, but it worked in the end. Um, you want to use a rag here, a lint-free rag, and gently just apply it onto the wood. Let me tell you, this is probably the most satisfying thing that I have ever done. Just look at it transform in front of your eyes. I can literally do this all day long. I highly recommend that you follow the directions that are on the can and of course be safe, wear some gloves, be in a well ventilated area, um, and then just enjoy. I know, I know, I'm sorry but I have to, I have to insert my plug here to invite you to come check me out on Instagram. I seriously love it when you all come say hi, ask your questions, share the projects that you're working on. Now Howard recommends we use this thing called Feed in Wax. What I believe this does is it sort of seals everything. Um, and kind of just protects what we just did. So I'm just grabbing a new rack here to gently apply it all over the wood. Uh, still very satisfying to do and watch. And let me tell you, it smells pretty nice, which I don't know if I'm supposed to be smelling this or not. I mean, it's beeswax, so I think it's safe, but seriously, like read the directions on anything that you ever use. So that does it for this project. Yes, I know nothing too exciting or over the top here, but I definitely wanted to share this because I know many of you have some furniture that need a little bit of love and a simple restoration like this can do the trick. All right, so that does it for today's project. What a mess, but that's real life. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you did, it'll really help us out. Subscribe for more videos like this. And I'm gonna put a playlist of other DIYs that I have done, better DIYs, I think. But I hope that you have a wonderful day and I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Bye.